What's going on guys, this is Mike with Michael Anthony Photography and thank you for checking out my article in this edition of Shutter Magazine. This month was all about location lighting tips, guys. Now, the one thing I wanna focus on, and I know I laid out five tips, but the, the one thing I really wanna focus on is choosing the right equipment for being out there uh, on location and uh, and lighting your subjects. Um, obviously, we're gonna be doing things like looking for natural light, using reflectors when we can. Those are all obvious things. And uh, even some of the tips that I laid out, like getting an assistant, those things will help you, uh, help you tremendously in the final product that you're able to deliver for your clients. But what I really want to focus on right now is p making sure that you guys are choosing the uh, the best variety of equipment to suit the needs that you're going to find yourself into uh, running into over and over and over again, right? Now, no matter where you guys live in the country, uh, I'm sure some places more than others, you're going to have a variety of different type of lighting situations uh, when you're out in the field. So for instance, in California, we usually only have one lighting situation. It's like bright and sunny, uh, blue skies, and uh, we're at like F-16 all the time, right? Except when it gets into nighttime. Obviously, uh, I'm joking a little bit here. Uh, we do have cloudy days as well, but what I'm trying to uh, make the point, uh, the point I'm trying to get across here is that you guys are gonna need to have different equipment for these different situations that you find yourself running into. And not only that, you have to stay mobile, obviously, as a portrait or wedding photographer, so you're gonna wanna be able to find um, equipment or only bring the equipment that you absolutely need. So our studio uses three different types of artificial light primarily. We use speed lights, uh, the Canon 600 EXRT are the speed lights that we have right now. I love these speed lights because they talk to each other. You can um, adjust them uh, from the controller on the actual flash. There's no need for any additional radio equipment and uh, they're ETTL and high speed sync capable, which are very, very important things in the way that I shoot, which is primarily quickly and, uh, and I wanna get on to the next shot. Those speed lights are not gonna be as powerful as some of the larger model lights that I'm gonna talk about in a second. So we usually will use these if the weather is gonna be um, very cloudy uh, or a rainy day, or I will pack these with me uh, if I am going to be shooting at nighttime, or if I'm going to be going to locations where I can't bring a large footprint. And in that case, I'll just uh, blend multiple uh, speed lights together uh, to create a larger light source if I have to. Right. Um, the second largest light source that we're going to be using is the Profoto B2. And I love this light source because it's a combination of portable and also powerful. And, uh, and it's also very easy if you guys are using an assistant too, because while the entire package together is about 3.5, 3.6 pounds, only about a pound of that or half a pound of that is gonna be the actual head of the flash itself, which means that your assistant can have the pack on it, on the, uh, the sling and actually be able to hold it with one arm. Now, my wife is normally assisting for me. She really likes the B2 because she doesn't have to, uh, doesn't have to heft the weight around the B1 uh, and hold it up over her head for long periods of time. So that light is really, really particularly good. Also, if you guys are traveling, that is an excellent, excellent light to bring along with you, okay? Because the heads are very small, the packs are very small, and it's just a very, very good portable package. We recently brought that light to San Francisco some of you guys may have seen some of our images that we created there, uh, and it was a really great uh, experience because we knew it was gonna be a cloudy day, so we can actually get that light through a modifier and still get beautiful light on our subjects. Um, so if you guys wanna check out those images, you can head over to our website to see, see them uh, more in detail. They're the only San Francisco images on our website, so they'll be easy to spot. Um, and there's a couple of them posted in the, uh, the Shutter Magazine article as well. But I really love the B2 for its mix of portability and power as well. And then we have the Big Daddy, the B1. One, right? I use this quite often because as I said before, we are out in California uh, shooting in blue skies all the time. And oftentimes I need to either overpower the sun or I need to, uh, to get a better balance of flash to my ambient light um, so that I can put my subjects in better quality light as opposed to the harsh shadows that our sun is gonna give us, right? So, uh, so I use this light, uh, like I said, quite often and typically we're taking it with us to the beach, we're taking it with us when we travel to, uh, to different countries or different states. Uh, and it's always gonna be there um, and we're able to switch those batteries out very, very easy. Um, I know that this light is a little more expensive. I know a lot of people have suggested uh, inexpensive alternatives. I would highly, highly advise against any knockoff equipment. And I, I can tell you this just based on experience. And while a lot of people have had very good experience using uh, inexpensive flashes, I can tell you that over time, um, as I did, you will run into problems if you are using uh, knockoff 
brands. Now, there are inexpensive brands out there that do a similar thing that the Profoto B1 does, um, but there is nothing out there that has the same kind of reliability, uh, rugged, rugged, ruggedness, did I just make up a word? Ruggedness and um, also uh, you know the effectiveness of it at the same time. So I really, really love uh, that light source. And uh, if you guys look at my images, a lot of them are particularly created with it as well. Um, lastly, guys, I wanna talk about our last tip, and that's using special effects when you guys get out there uh, with your lighting. Oftentimes, we do this to get uh, one or two creative images for our clients, and they're typically gonna be done toward the end of our session. So we use uh, CTO or half CTO gels all the time. Now, half CTO gels are typically used to um, either mimic sunlight or blend the light on your subjects with the natural sunlight in the scene. What we do often is we'll use a uh, the sun as a kicker on our subject and use a Profoto B1 or B2 uh, on the front of them, right? Now, if you just use the flash by itself as that key light, it's not gonna be the same color as the ambient light coming from the sun. Therefore, it's really important for you to make sure that you're using these lights effectively in the flash gels and blending everything uh, appropriately, right? Uh, turning day into night. Now, I've talked about this in a couple different Shutter Magazine articles, all in different capacities. So if you guys are interested in this technique, um, you can go back and look at those. There's also some other people who, uh, who have taught about it online as well. And basically what it involves is um, stopping down your ambient exposure when the light gets a little bit darker in the, uh, in the evening and, uh, and setting your white balance in your camera to 3200 Kelvin. This will in turn turn the entire scene in your uh, in your camera to blue, right? It'll look more um, like dusk, if you will, right? Then if you use a, uh, a CTO gel on a flash and you put that light back on your subjects, that light will become white or perfectly balanced. And it'll look like you're lighting your subjects with either moonlight or they're being lit uh, in this nighttime environment, um, even when it's daytime outside. It's a really cool way to impress your clients and show them that, uh, that you know how to do things with your camera that will make them say wow and put awesome images on their wall. Um, so that's all that I have for you guys today. There's a little bit more information in our article. Uh, as always, if you guys need anything at all, I'm an open book. You can get me on Facebook. You can uh, email me at mike at michaelanthonyphotography.com and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Thank you again for checking out my article in this month's Shutter Magazine and I will catch you guys again next month.